All right, so today's video is about the file and file list objects. So these are objects that are built into JavaScript. They're part of the web APIs when dealing with forms. So many times when you're dealing with forms, you're dealing just with text. Whether it's an input type equals number or text or email or URL, or it's a drop down list or a text area, you're working with text. You're working with strings. But the input type equals file allows you to, or allows your user to select files from their operating system and bring them into your web form. So how do we get at that information? How do we get at the file? What can we do with it? All right, so let's look at the HTML first of all here. I have inside of here a simple little form. So there's a form element inside of it. I've got an input type equals file. This is what shows up. Now, the appearance of this is going to change a little bit depending on which browser you're looking at. But basically, there's going to be a button that allows the user to click and select one or more files. Uh, I've got three buttons that I've added in here. What I want to be able to do is show you how you can select files without actually having this control. So I've got my own button here. I'm going to show you how you can, with just a plain ordinary button, select files. And then what information can we get about the file? Okay, so by default, when I click on this button, here's my current folder. That's the folder with all these files right here. I can, by default, pick on one of these things. So I can select one file. If I hold down shift, I can't do anything different. If I hold down control uh, or uh, command, I can't select anything more. So by default, the input type equals file lets the user pick one thing. Once they've selected one file, again, this will vary depending on the browser, but basically they'll display the name of the file that you selected. If you want to allow the user to select multiple files, simply enough, all you have to do is add the attribute multiple. I save that, come back in here again. And if I wanted to select both the images and the JSON files, there we go. So I've got four files selected. There they are. And it tells me there's four files selected. Simple enough. All right. Now doing something with this in JavaScript. Inside of here, I have four listeners. So DOM content loaded, my first listener, when the HTML is fully read and the DOM has been parsed, then I'm going to be adding these event listeners. One is the change event. So anytime you pick a file or the user picks a file, that's going to trigger the change event. And then these are the three buttons that I've got down here, the toggle file input, pick files, and show file info. Those three are these three right here. I'm going to write a little bit of code inside of files picked just to show you what we're getting. Now that I can select multiple, I'm going to have the potential for multiple files. Even without that multiple attribute added, we still get this file list object. So let's say I'm going to find the input element. So right here, this text type equals file, this one right here. That is going to be the target of the event. So that is my input element itself. Down the side here, I'm going to remove multiple just for one second, just to show you what we're getting here. Back inside of files, that's my input. And my files list, file list object right here. If I say input type files, that's what this is. This is the array of files. Now, remember I took multiple off so I can only get one. I'm still going to get this list. So let's just put this out in the console. There's my array. My array can only have one thing in it, but it's still going to be an array. There we go. So files is a file list object. And as we go through here, we'll see that file list Item zero inside of here is a file object. So here's the file list and here's the file object. The file object has a whole bunch of these properties. So last modified. This is a timestamp that tells you when that file was last modified. You can pass that into a JavaScript date object and then extract the actual time and date from it or read the time and date from that. 
name, this is the file name, type, this is the MIME type, size, this is in bytes. So how many bytes is that file? Uh, WebKit, that's specific to WebKit. It's not used anymore. This last modified date isn't previous older version. So last modified, this is the one that is supported across all the browsers. And length is a property of file list telling me how many things I've got selected. So I'm only allowed to select one, but if we go back and we add the multiple, now I can pick multiple files. So let's pick these top three. Now file list, we open that up. There it is, there's the three. And you'll notice that these are in alphabetical order. This is typically the the order that they will come back inside the file list, regardless of how you've got it arranged in your file system. The alphabetical order is the order that the file list will present it. Okay, so we have these three files. Now, if I wanted to display the information, we know that we've got all those different uh, bits and pieces. So if the person hits cancel, this is going to be empty. Like if I come up here and I hit cancel, there's no files chosen. Inside my file list, you can see length is zero. There are no files. So what I want to do is I'm going to put it into a separate function here, show file info. Now I'm going to, when I click on this button, I'm going to display in the console all the details about each one of those. So that's my function here. We've got button info, show file info. I'm going to write the code here. And then what I also want to do is I want to call it from here. So after I've got this information, if I have files, so we could say if files.length is greater than zero, then I'm going to call that show file info function. It's going to be expecting an event object. So I'm going to pass my event from here, but this is my change event. This from up here is being called by a click event. And we want to do EV prevent default for the click. We don't want to prevent the change. The change is what's giving the files to the file list object. So instead of writing two functions that's going to duplicate this functionality, I'm just going to wrap this in an if statement. We're going to look at ev.type. Is it going to be click or is it going to be change? So if it is click, this is what I'm going to do. So if it's click, prevent the default because clicking buttons inside of a form element is going to make them want to submit the form. It'll reload the page. We don't want to do that. So that's the purpose of this EV prevent default that we're doing here and here and here that I had at the very beginning of the code. All right. So we want to loop through everything in the file list. So we can do the same thing that we are doing up here. Now, ev.target works fine for the change. And if the change is passed in here, ev.target is going to give me that file control. But this is being also called by a click of the button. So we have to actually target this thing directly. So input file, that is the ID. So I'll use that. That is our files object from there. So let's put it into a variable and then we'll loop through it. We'll just use a standard for loop. And just to make the display a little bit easier, I'm going to put them inside of a group because I'm going to be writing out several properties for each one for each of the files. Okay, I'll start with just this, just writing out the name of the selected files. There we go. So basic.json, comments.json, dragonfly.jpg. There's the three files. And we can just repeat this with all those properties. So there was the size in bytes. There was the type, which is the MIME type. And last modified, which is the timestamp. There we go. So I selected four basic.json, which is 137 bytes. It's a JSON file. There we go. 
there's all four files that I selected. All the details about them are available to you. Now, what I also want to do here is I want to filter this. So this is something that's built right into the HTML. Let's say I only want the user to be able to select images or JSON files or CSS files, whatever the type is. These are possible values that we can put inside of here. There's an attribute called accept. Inside of here, you're allowed to put file extensions. So .html, .xml, .json, or you can put MIME types or to get better support across all the browsers, you can put both. So if I were to say, okay, any kind of image or .png, .jpg, .gif, .wepi, I could say all this, or we could say individually all these plus those, some combination. So there we are. There's all my different types that I'm going to allow. Now, when the user selects this, you'll see the only ones that they can select, I can't pick the JSON or the JS or the HTML files. It's only the images that I am able to select. There we are. There we have our information showing up. Okay, so last thing. If you want to be able to, as I said earlier, pick the files. I want to be able to click on this button and get the files. Instead of having this control, which the appearance varies from browser to browser, I can do a standard designed button that matches my interface. So I've got two buttons here. One for toggling, because we do need to have an input control of type file. This does have to be on the web page somewhere, but it doesn't mean that we have to show it. Now, if we're talking about accessibility, we're going to show the button that lets the person click on it, but we cannot for the input type equals file. We cannot set that to display none or visibility hidden. If we do that, it's going to be ignored entirely by the screen readers. We still need to have it there. So we just want to hide this thing so it doesn't show up visually on the screen. It still needs to be part of the page. So. We're going to go in here to the toggle input. I want to hide this thing. And remember, it's this element right here. So here's our input control. That's what it is. And I'm going to add a CSS, stat, uh, CSS class to it. This is the best way to uh, control hiding and showing things. And I'm just going to make it toggle. And the one that I want to toggle is one that I created called hidden. We'll take a look at that in a second. Just make sure this still works. There. We're just hiding and showing this thing. That's all we're doing. And what are we doing inside of hidden? So opacity makes it invisible. Height and line height. We're going to set those both to zero. Get rid of padding and margin. And we'll set the overflow. So anything that does spill out beyond this is going to be hidden. So it's going to be not showing, but the element itself is still going to be there. I'm going to zoom back out here. There's normal. There we go. So just hiding and showing. And with that not showing up on the screen, this becomes our de facto control. This is the function that's going to run when we click on this. All we need to do, if you remember, when this thing was visible, the person just had to click on that. That's what toggled this file picker control. So if I do this, all I have to do is say, click. Now the user clicks on my button. My button will click on this thing, which will show the file picker control. So there we go. Selected. It's in there. We have the two files and there it is. So even if that is invisible, I can pick one file picked and there it is. There's the information of the one that I picked. All right. So I hope that helps make files and file lists um, a little bit more understandable. 
I'm going to be making a few more videos in the next uh, few days about what you can do with these files once you have them. So how would I read the files and then display the information on the screen? Or how would I take the file and save it in the cache? So in the browser cache, using the cache API, how would I do that? Um, how would I, let's say if I'm downloading a file, how would I read that file and measure the download progress for it using fetch? Um, so these are all things that I'm going to be uh, making videos of in the next few days. So I hope this helps you out. And as always, thanks for watching.